Hello everyone, welcome. Today we'll be reviewing meiosis. So first off, I have this chart here that shows how many chromosomes and chromatids are present in a cell at each stage of meiosis. Make note that these numbers reflect the end of each stage. So if you'd like, you can take a screenshot or take a picture of this before we move on. Let's go ahead and get started. Meiosis is broken down into meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Much like mitosis, there is a prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. In meiosis 1, we always put the Roman numeral 1 after each phase. In meiosis 2, we also have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And we put the Roman numeral 2 at the end of these, so we know exactly where we are in meiosis. Notice that between telophase 1 and prophase 2, there is nothing in between, like no interphase. We go straight from telophase 1 to prophase 2. However, we do have interphase at the beginning of meiosis 1. Let's do a quick recap on what happens in interphase before the cell enters meiosis. Here is our cell, and here is our nucleus. Inside the nucleus, we have 23 maternal chromatin and 23 paternal chromatin. Remember, maternal comes from the female and paternal comes from the male. There technically should be a total of 46 chromatin in this illustration. However, I didn't want to make it look too messy, so just imagine there are a total of 46 chromatin inside of the nucleus of the cell. The major thing that happens in interphase is cell division. Specifically, it happens in the S phase or synthesis phase. This means all chromatin are doubled because they all make one copy of themselves. Since there is double the amount of chromatin, we now have 46 maternal and 46 paternal chromatin. Okay, so the big takeaway here is that the cell leaves interphase with 92 total chromatin. The cell is now ready to enter meiosis 1. Specifically, it enters prophase 1. Remember, the cell leaves interphase and moves into prophase with 92 chromatin. Now, a few major things happen here in prophase 1. First off, the chromatin condenses into chromatids with their sister chromatids and they form this X shape. Next, synapsis occurs. This is when the homologous chromosomes pair up. If you can recall, homologous is referring to one maternal and one paternal chromosome pair. So this is our homologous pair, one maternal and one paternal, and they're going to pair up by overlapping each other. Next, the homologous chromosomes undergo a process called crossing over. This is when the two chromosomes exchange DNA information. If we zoom in, we can see the two chromosomes close up. By the way, this pair is referred to as a tetrad. Each tetrad has four sister chromatids that make up two chromosomes. Each chromosome has alleles. Alleles are a specific copy of a gene. In other words, each allele has the ability to code for a characteristic trait. In a homologous pair, the same alleles on both the chromosomes are located in the same place one inherited from each parent. Here, AA and BB are going to code for the same thing. A and B are also going to code for the same thing. Watch closely at AA and BB as they exchange DNA information. Now, A and B are going to exchange DNA information. This is the process called crossing over. This is how they exchange DNA information. Keep in mind that there are 46 homologous chromosome pairs in this nucleus, and all 46 pairs are going to undergo the same process of synapsis and crossing over, and all 46 pairs will look different after this process. For example, let's look at another pair of homologous chromosomes. Here, alleles DD and CC exchange places, but not C and D. Oh, and by the way, remember I mentioned that each allele on the same location of each homologous chromosome codes for the same thing? This is what I mean. Here, these two alleles both code for hair texture. Remember, although we only see three pairs of homologous chromosomes undergoing synapsis and crossing over, in reality, all 92 chromatids will be pairing up with their homologous pair and undergoing this process together. 
Now, I can't stress this enough. It is essential that you understand the purpose of crossing over. Basically, it creates genetic diversity. Every single sperm and egg cell that are produced at the end of meiosis will be different from the parent cell and different from each other. This is why siblings can look very different from each other and from their parents, but not identical. So the big takeaway here is crossing over equals genetic diversity. The last thing that happens here in prophase one is the nucleus begins to disappear. The most important events in prophase one to remember are synapses, crossing over, and of course, crossing over means genetic diversity. So leaving prophase one, the cell moves on to metaphase one. Here, the only eventful thing that happens is the chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate. Keep in mind that these chromosomes can line up in different random variations, which will result in variations of gametes or haploid cells. They can line up like this, or like this, or like this. Also keep in mind that on the right, 23 full chromosomes, and by full I mean a paired, chromosomes are lined up, and on the left, 23 full or paired chromosomes are also lined up giving us a grand total of 46 total chromosomes. As I mentioned, this is the only eventful thing that happens in metaphase, and it is the most important thing to remember. Aside from that, the spindle fibers elongate and they attach to the centromere of each chromosome. These yellow dots represent the centrosomes and those are the spindle fibers coming out of them. Next, the cell moves on to anaphase one. The most important thing that happens here is the homologous pairs are pulled away from each other, each going to opposite ends of the cell. At this point, keep in mind, we have 23 chromosomes pulled to each side. So 23 chromosomes on the right and 23 chromosomes pulled to the left. Again, the only important thing to remember here is that the pairs are splitting and being pulled away from each other. After anaphase 1, the cell moves on to telophase 1. Here, cytokinesis splits the cell into two cells. We started with one parent cell and ended with two genetically different haploid daughter cells. Haploid meaning the cell contains a half of the complete set of chromosomes. So if you need to look at the full set for reference, go back to metaphase 1 and anaphase 1 before cytokinesis happens. So each of these haploid cells contain only one set of chromosomes, each set consisting of paired sister chromatids. At the end of telophase 1, we have 23 chromosomes and 46 chromatids in each cell. These cells are ready to leave telophase 1 and move on to prophase 2. In prophase 2, the nucleus dissolves and the spindle fibers elongate. Pretty much the same stuff that happens in mitosis happens here. These yellow dots again represent the centrosomes and the lines coming out of them are the spindle fibers. The cell next leaves prophase 2 and enters metaphase 2. Here the chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate. This is pretty much all that is important to remember in metaphase, is that the chromosomes, they line up. After metaphase, the cell moves on to anaphase 2. Here the spindles attach to the centromere of each chromosome and pull the chromatids apart. By the way, do you remember the structure that the spindle fibers specifically attach to? The kinetochores, yes. Specifically, the spindle fibers will attach to the kinetochore on the centromere. So this is the most important thing you need to remember in anaphase two. At this point in anaphase two, we have 23 chromatids, which is equal to 23 chromosomes here, 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 and here. Side note, in case you forgot, we count the number of chromosomes by the number of centromeres present. So that's why we have 23. After anaphase two, the cell moves on to telophase two. Here, cytokinesis will split these two cells into four total cells. So these two will each split and make four haploid cells. This is the final step of mitosis, but there are a few key points you need to know here. One is each cell will end up with 23 chromatids equal to 23 chromosomes. Each cell is different from one another and different from the parent cell. And lastly, if meiosis is happening in a female, 
then the four cells being produced will be egg cells because females have eggs. And if meiosis is happening in a male, then the four cells will be sperm cells because males have sperm. Oh, and one last thing, these four haploid cells are also referred to as gametes because gametes are sex cells. I guess what I'm saying here is that mitosis produces somatic cells and meiosis produces sex cells or gametes. Alrighty, everyone, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you learned something new and until next time.